Hello and welcome to a special Thursday lunchtime edition of Footy Talks. We're about five minutes away from uh, a special guest joining us. Sebastian Javinko is going to be coming on because um, one of the reasons that we're doing this Footy Talks now is it's the day before TFC's match of the week. Um, I didn't vote for it, to be honest. It was uh, TFC <laughs> against the Red Bulls. I voted for the other game. Why did you vote for it, Wildman? Hey? Why didn't you vote for it, Wildman? Well, you guys know full well why I didn't vote for it because that, that was... <laughs> Other hundred people would like to know, Wildman. Why didn't? Well, we'll get we'll get into that a little bit later on, but it's <laughs> it's not great memories for me. But what a night that was, and for Toronto as well. When um, the same night as the Jose Bautista bat flip, and, and TFC fans can relive it tomorrow night on uh, on the TFC website as they stream the game. And just while we wait for Seba to pop up, KJ, uh, you've you've been at BMO Field for many of TFC's biggest nights, probably all of them. Um, just because of what it was and the way it happened, is, does that rank up there with, with the top three or four? Oh, unquestionably. I think it was the beginning of what was to follow. You know, it was the start of so many special nights and that was the night that many people started to believe that it could come, you know, and that was the, that was the beginning. It was really the start again of special nights. And um, look, 2015 was an enormous year for the franchise and Sebastian Jovinko turned that team around and made a big difference. So, um, yeah, here he is. Hey Seba, great to see you right now. How how are you doing and your family? Yeah, very good, guys. Thank you. Nice to see you to everyone. Uh, lots of people in Toronto online watching this right now, and of course, we're talking about it, Seba, because the game tomorrow night uh, that is being replayed is that game in 2015 when you scored that goal um, and yeah. sealed TFC's first ever playoff uh, appearance. Where does that rank? I mean, you've got so many great memories of your time in Toronto, but where does that moment rank for you? Yes, no, that moment was uh, unbelievable because I remember I played the day before with the national team. I landed the next day to Toronto. I went uh, straight to the um, to the BMO without, uh, you know, even see my my family. I demonstrate uh, to every to everyone how much I love my teammate, you know how much I love um, the game, how much I love the city, the fans, the um, whole organization, the MLC, I mean. And uh, for me, it was, uh, was a special moment. Sabra, let's talk about the goal itself. What are your memories of the goal? And is it one of your favorites in your career? Ah, yes. Of course, it was a great goal. Beautiful goal, uh, especially because uh, we we make the playoff, no. And uh, I think uh, everything starts from that moment. When uh, from there we built the 2017 um, MLS Cup. When when did you decide, Seba, that you were going to hurry home from Italy to try and make it in the lineup for the game that night at Bimo Field? No. I decide. Uh, I decide uh, right away because uh, I I I thought it was a very important moment for the club uh, because uh, was uh, if we win was the first time in the playoff and I think it was a special uh, special moment from uh, from uh, all organization. And did you? Did you want to start that game? I think Stevie was going to ask exactly the same yeah. question there. <laughs> yes, yes. I asked uh, to Greg to to start from uh, the eleven, the eleven player, but uh, he said, "No, it's better uh, if you can come uh, in the second half." How how close to normal did you feel coming on for that game? Given the fact that you had had that isn't a normal preparation for a game flying all the way from Rome into Toronto, being on the plane all day, getting straight off. Did you feel anywhere close to how you usually do? No, I feel, uh, I feel very good. I don't know <laughs> why. I don't know. Uh, maybe because I sleep a little bit on the plane. <laughs> on the plane. I don't know. But uh, I f the feeling was uh, very, very good. Great. We are going to see the arrival of Sebastian Javinko. This is a substitution, isn't it? Hercules <laughs> Gomez coming off. He scored in that game, Gomez, too. Yeah. So here you come. 20 minutes left to go. 
But by, by the way, it's like 2.38 a.m. in Italy at this time. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the goal. Still Javinko. Oh, Javinko. Oh, my God. That is absolutely exceptional. What That's the move, no? The move from the right foot to the left foot. Seba, did you think about shooting on the right foot and then go to the left? At uh, the beginning, yes. But uh, I think... Um, I think I'm scored from the beginning when I put my body between you know, the, the player and the ball. Uh, because I, if you see, I almost lose the ball in that moment. And then uh, with one touch, I, I pass the both, uh, both player. No? But at no, point, at no point did you look up and think, where can I pass to? Who's there to pass to? You were, you were just set on going for goal there. I I saw only blue blue t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I watched this goal about ten times this morning. I forgot how good it was to see the number of blue and yellow, blue shorts, yellow shorts in front of you. You know they're just weaving in and out. At this moment here is just spectacular. <laughs> right filthy, what filthy, sensational. <laughs> You Seba, you, you were someone who really enjoyed Toronto and the sporting culture. And we talked a bit about TFC winning, now the Raptors winning, the Jays winning. What was it like as an athlete being able to live in a city that has such a great sporting culture and you love to go and see the Raptors and you, you love to go and, and just take it all in, all the different sports that were going on in Toronto? Uh, who play, who, I think who played uh, with passion, no? who loved the, the game... Uh, uh, these these nights are, uh, are are very special, and uh, this is uh, this is why we play. This is the for uh, have this kind of uh, night. Well, I remember being at Air Canada Centre as it was then in the December, and at, at just a few few weeks after that, you got the MLS MVP award, and uh, it capped off a pretty special 2015 year for you, didn't it, Seba? Yeah, they don't give me the, also the goal of the year because if not, I, I will uh, <laughs> I wouldn't, have everything. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. There have been a few questionable goals of the year down, down, the, uh, <laughs> down the years. It didn't even win goal of the week. Can you guys believe that? Neymar, oh. it was ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah? Yeah, Neymar know. won goal of the week. Which one? Uh, the Neymar goal when he beat about 26 yeah. players oh. for sports in Kansas uh, City. Because it's not too much. Yeah, <laughs> too much to the to me. So they yeah. have to share all the, the. They gave you too much trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have been a little bit uh, a little bit selfish trying to get every single trophy in Major League Soccer. <laughs> you you did get your obviously you you had that individual honor in 2015, and then 2017 was the year when MLS uh, records were set, and you won the Supporters Shield, the Canadian Championship. MLS Cup as well. Um, when you look at your career, is that the year that really stands out as being that 2017? Even though you had 2015 such individual success, was 2017 the one in Toronto you look back on most fondly? Yes, 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 100. percent Because uh, I think the soccer is a um, sport game, uh, and I think uh, that uh that night also was uh, unbelievable for uh, for uh, the entire city the entire country and for uh, everybody was uh, special Seba, let me ask you about Josie Altador. he joked this week on social media that he got sent off from the bench on that game <laughs> he didn't even get to get on the field he got a red card in that game if you remember uh, yes, I, know, yes, I, remember. I know you guys are really close and um in 88 games in MLS that you two played together, you combined for, to score 102 goals, the two of you, in 88 games, which is absolutely remarkable. And your relationship with Josie continues today. But how much fun was it playing with Josie for TFC? Oh, uh, it was uh, very, very fun. Uh, we complement each other. I have a great uh, memory of uh, Josie. And... Uh, was a uh, was, um, very good teammate, uh, very good person. And uh, yes, miss, uh, he missed so much. Well, Seba, there are lots of TFC fans on here this Thursday lunch. I don't hear you anymore. I think we lost Wildman. 
Can you still hear us, KJ? Yeah, I got you guys. Yeah, so, but I just, yeah, uh, I think I think he was just saying, you know, everyone's on here to listen to this. Uh, but we we appreciate the time, don't we, KJ? It's been brilliant to reminisce and and talk about the past and the stories. Yes, yeah, but we really appreciate you joining us on this on this special day. And uh, oh, it was a pleasure, guys. We uh, we'll give you one last word. What do you want to say to the TFC fans that are watching you? Ah, uh, um, I can say uh, miss you all, uh, all the fans. Miss uh, the BMO and uh, nothing. I ho- I hope uh, from from me the uh, all success as possible. Well, we appreciate that, Seba. Good luck in the future in your career. We'll speak to you soon. And nothing but health for your family. Okay. Yeah, Thanks, you, Seba. You guys. You're yeah. welcome anytime, mate. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Take care. Yes. We'll chat with you Bye, soon. Guys. Take care Bye. again. Thanks very much, Sebastian Jovinko. Reminiscing about a very special night. Thanks again to him for joining us. You were pitch side, KJ. I, yes. I saw you obviously in the highlights. So you were doing your, your usual role pitch side. And what did it feel like? What was the atmosphere like down there? I'd love to know that. Well, it was one of those nights for me as a journalist where I didn't want to go home. So whenever things like that happen and whether I end up writing a TFC book or whether just the columns that I've written, what I did at that time was I didn't, I just wanted to walk in the city. So I didn't even go get my car. I walked around the city right. for a little bit. It was bedlam. There was traffic everywhere. People was chanting. People obviously, you know, wearing the blue of the blue jays, the red of TFC, coming together at different moments. That's what I remember. But I just, as I said earlier, before we brought Seba on, the moment the stadium gates opened and everybody came in, there was this, there was this euphoric, euphoric atmosphere about a game that you don't get very often at the start. Often football games have anticipation and people come in and they're excited about what they're about to see. But they already were coming in in a party atmosphere because of what Bautista had done and Encarnacion had hit the home run and then that epic game against the Rangers where the Blue Jays went on to win it. So TFC fans, who were the loyal ones who came to that game, were such in a good mood already that they wanted their moment. And as I said earlier, you know, Hercules Gomez got the 1-0 goal. It was drifting out that way a little bit. But they needed their moment on a night when it was obvious the moment the city began to the Blue Jays. It was obvious that TFC were in the limelight a little bit because we just knew that obviously this was unique for the Jays as well for so long. But for those loyal fans and for the fans that poured into that stadium for a party, that's the big thing that sticks with me is that on a night when they got their moment, the night that they've been dreaming about for many of them since 20, 2005, 2006, the birth of when it started and then 07 to kick the ball. They needed their moment. We're in the playoffs. And it was just, it felt right that it, there was such a special moment like that. And then I just remember pitch side looking around and seeing people like climbing seats and jumping sections to hug people. And it was just, it was, uh, it was the beginning of the Toronto FC that we now know. And, and I think the beginning of uh, the, the real start of the city of Toronto that we now know as well. Yeah. Well, I wasn't there that night at BMO Field, as you both know. Let's get to this story, Luke. So I was, um, FC Dallas were playing against the Whitecaps that night and it was first against second in the West. So I was at Frisco, Texas. One of the people that was in the broadcast booth as our floor manager, or I'm not sure exactly what he was doing that night. He wasn't particularly assisting in the broadcast. Um, we're 10 minutes from going on air. Uh, he wasn't very happy anyway that day. Um, this guy, he, uh, he decided just to try and move the camera as we were about to go on air. But he slipped, knocked the camera, knocked all the lights over. Um, so everything just went crashing down and we're getting in our headphones like, okay, we're on in uh, two minutes. Like, so he's, this guy is scrambling right now. Uh, scra- like, uh, just in, in a complete frenzy. Trying to pick everything up off the floor, gets everything set back up. The, the swearing, it was just out of control. It was ridiculous. So that he was punching things. It was just like, it was, and, and me and Dasso, were like, and Dasso said, said to him, hey, it's all right, man. I've, I've got some Croatia, Croatian in me. I'm used to this sort of stuff. But it's fine, right? Just calm, Dasso's trying to calm him down. And we're getting 60 seconds. And he's trying to sort this clamp out. It was like one of those old Bunsen burner things at school. Where the, 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 the camera was just hanging off this clamp and it kept dropping. And he was just, he was so angry. To the point where people started coming into the booth because they could hear the commotion that was going on. So anyway, someone says to him, as we're counting down, we're within 60 seconds to going on air. And somebody says to him, okay, I'll take it from here. You go. Right. So they're basically, one of our production teams basically taking the decision. We're not going to get on air with this guy. So we better do something else. So at which point he says, 
okay, if I'm going, I'm going home to get my gun. I'll see you later. Right? <laughs> okay, we're on in 10, 9, 8. So me and Dasso have to turn around and call the game. And the whole of the 90 minutes, every time someone came past the door, <laughs> I'm like, I on the pitch, like looking behind me to see if this was this guy coming. And it was so... That's why that night is not one that lives particularly well in my memory. Not just for that, but also for the fact that it was just such a... I, I, I love calling great goals. Iconic goals. Moments that matter. And, um, yeah, that night we, it was Dallas. I don't, I don't think the Dallas Whitecaps game was so memorable. But, well, anyway, that, we just talked about a story for, for this game when it was up for, uh, up for the vote today because it just brings back too many... Uh, Negative memories. Listen, we're going to do this again sometime. Um, so, so check out the Footy Talks uh, online um, on the Twitter to see if uh, the the next show when it's coming up. Uh, but there will be more coming up. Also, TSN's got some great games. TFC has that TFC replay on online tomorrow night. TFC against the New York Red Bulls. Um, some MLS action coming up next week on TSN. They're going to replay lots of games from the 2017 run to MLS Cup. Um, we got an Alfonso Davies special coming out next week on TSN tonight. It's the Canadian top 10 women being ranked. That show is on TSN 3. So lots of soccer content, even though uh, no live games. So uh, great to have everybody with us. Thanks for giving us an hour of your time today and being part of this. Uh, we'll see you soon, boys. Thanks for everybody joining Thanks, us. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, best of luck and stay safe, everybody. Good to see you all.